Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of Phil's Innovation Shuttle. Once again from sunny California from Silicon Valley. I'm currently on my way to pick up a fellow German, Dr. Yvonne Lutsch, who works for Robert Bosch Venture Capital. Bosch is one of the big, big German corporations and she will introduce that a little bit. So she works there as a investor in venture capital and I am excited personally to learn more about what she's up to and also um, to learn more about the focus of corporate innovation at such a major corporation and what they do in Silicon Valley. So have fun with this episode. Yvonne, welcome to the Innovation Shuttle and thank you so much for joining the ride today. Thanks for having me, Philip. So now we have to switch back to English. Back so to English, back yeah. To English. Oh, yeah. I do this several times every day, so that's good. Perfect. We know that we work for German companies, so we have to switch back and forth. We already had a pretty cool conversation right now, um, but for the ride we want to focus on corporate innovation and innovation topics. Yeah. And before we do that, uh, it would be amazing if you introduce yourself a little bit, but also the company Bosch, because I did a little introduction into it, um, but I don't. I didn't want to talk Sh about. Should Bosch. I start with my childhood? No, please not. Um, <laughs> we had that before, and then I had to cut everything in the video. Keep it interesting. What do you do here in Silicon yeah, Valley as yeah. a German for a German company? Yeah. So I'll start with the company. So um, any. The Germans, I don't have to explain them what Bosch is normally. Um, I started at Bosch 20 years ago. So it's a multi international German conglomerate of many different businesses. Um, a large business is in automotive mobility. Um, some people don't know it. I mean, even in your Tesla, there are lot of, lots of Bosch components. Um, and then there are other business in industrial technology and consumer goods. People in US, they all know the dishwashers. <laughs> years ago. Um, that's a long time. That's a long time. I was I was like in my junior um, high school years so and um, I was an engineer. I worked in engineering and quality management, production, customer success, whatnot. Um, and seven years ago they offered me a position in Silicon Valley and I was like what? Okay, I do that. Um, and that's why I went, came here and I came as an expat and after a year I was like, I need to stay. Um, and then five years ago I made another transition within the corporation to join the venture group. Uh -huh. So before that, this was more an open innovation role and now it's full blown venture capital. Wow. Um, and I mean, you would ask me anyway, um, what makes Bosch Venture Capital special? Um, so we do this as a venture group for more than 15 years. and. Um, we act very much like a financial VC, um, even though we are a CVC, a corporate venture capital. That means we raise funds, even though one LP, that's a corporation, but we have fund structure, we have a carry structure, we have, um, you know, we keep reserves for follow-on investments, we mm -hmm. don't get diluted, and we do, at the end, invest for financial return. Mm -hmm. But of course, we want to see a strategic fit. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be a CVC. Are you are you guys as the venture capital capital fund, the corporate venture capital fund, a carved out standalone company, or are you still part of Bosch? We are part of Bosch, but mm -hmm. we are a subsidiary, so we are a separate German GmbH. Okay. Um, and um, so we, you know, we can control our money, um, the fund money. Yeah. But um, it's a hundred percent our subsidiary. What's the what's the investment uh, focus? Like stages and industries. And industry, yeah. Stages. Um, we are pretty stage agnostic, um, but we are rather early, especially for a CVC. Um, some some yeah. venture, some corporate venture are rather late when there is a product and customer attraction and whatnot. Yeah. We do invest from Series C to later stage. Um, typical check size for seed is maybe a million. Larger checks is maybe 10 million first investment, initial investment, and um, areas. I mean, any area which is like from a technology perspective an interesting future thing um, and has some relevance for Bosch. And this, I mean, IoT was a big, big, big topic a couple of years ago. Yeah. It still kind of is a topic, but. 
that things... I will never forget that commercial from Bosch with that IoT song. Like a Bosch with Sean? Like a Bosch, yes. This was cool, right? It was amazing. We still we still have... So Sean is now working for Bosch for five years or so. Yeah. And I actually I was... I talked to a Bosch colleague recently and I was wondering whether this Sean can do anything else anymore because people now identify him with Bosch. Yes, absolutely. Poor guy. So I would strongly recommend to everyone watching um, just put in Google or YouTube like a Bosch and yeah. you will know everything about that company. For me, it was really refreshing to see um, something like that from a German corporation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now yeah. I think at, at, at least for once Bosch did a good decision to hire the right uh, marketing <laughs> firm and, and to do this. Love it. It's one of his famous um, in Hamburg. Uh, Omar? No, the other one. I forgot the name, okay. but if, if you hear the name, it doesn't matter. Okay. But yeah, like a Bosch, I really highly recommend it. Nice. Um, so what, what makes you unique? What makes you special? And what do you love most about your job here? Two yeah, difficult questions. I was questions. thinking about what makes me unique. Um, I think what is actually pretty rare is being a deep tech female venture capitalist. Um, yes. My background is physics. I have a PhD in physics. I was working in, you know, all about electronics, engineering, blah, blah, blah. And being able to understand things deep technical, it's pretty rare in the investment community and even more less common in the female venture community, which is yeah. almost non-existent. Um, that's about me. I mean, what, and what makes do you me love unique? most? What do you love what most love about what most, you do every day? Um, dealing with so many different people and very smart people, to be honest. In the beginning, this was very intimidating when I came here. Mm -hmm. oh, there are so many smart people and they all graduated from Stanford and I'm from a random U German university. And then I made my peace with it because what if you have to deal with dumb people all day? That's the opposite. That's even worse. That's much worse. So I made my peace with it, yeah. um, rather having to deal with smart people all the time and feeling a little bit intimidated. Yeah. But you learn so much and they are still, most of them are very humble and still nice to you. Um, yeah. And I dig into new topics, I don't know, every other week. That's good. Still? Still. still. I mean, new, new deal, new topic, right? Yes. And one thing is you learn about new technologies, yeah. like quantum technology, wireless technology. Yeah, I saw all these hashtags on LinkedIn. Or Deep tech, AI, quantum. Yeah, yeah, and they only allow five. Yeah. Um, and then you learn about the industries, um, whether this is... And about the problems in these industries exactly, and what they want exactly, to solve. Exactly, like yeah. quantum computing in finance industry or AI and robotics yeah. in waste recycling. Yeah, That's something I'm looking at right now. Okay. I visit. I, I was in okay. two recycling facilities last week. I went there. How was it? Very what can robotics do for that? Very stinky. Uh, they can they can do this <laughs> almost inhuman tasks like tedious tasks, sorting wow. good from bad um, automatically, you not with people. That's a huge. And they can give people more meaningful jobs. That's a huge value. Yeah. It's also, it's also very dangerous. It's you yeah. know it's. Then final question on Bosch venture capital. Uh, in detail if people who watch this uh, we have a lot of founders or people who have great ideas how can people get in, can get in touch with Bosch Venture Capital so they can go on our webpage very simple rbvc.com mm -hmm. um, we have email addresses there they mm -hmm. can reach out to or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn okay that's simple then let's talk about corporate innovation in general mm -hmm. um, I mean I work for a Siemens company, uh, which is an acquisition, which is also a strong field of getting innovation into a corporation. But mm -hmm. what's your personal perspective on why some companies can live for hundreds of years, reinvent themselves, create new revenue streams and not fall to the innovator's dilemma and others don't? What do you think makes companies, like what gives companies longevity? You have to be aware of the problem and, and, and prepare yourself, right? I mean, there are books about, about it, how to do it. Yeah. Um, you have to carve out some capacity for innovation and not killing innovation at any tiny financial crisis moment. Mm -hmm. And you have to make it...
possible. I mean, one thing is that Bosch still, you know, through all the crises. Actually, we started our our venture fund end of 2007. Oh, okay. Um, and they said, no, we are not stopping this. Yeah. I mean, we are not stopping this half a year after we started the whole yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Um, that's that's the important thing. Just the, the top level managers, they have to understand the innovators dilemma. They have to understand what it means. And if they if they carve out people mm -hmm. and money mm -hmm. to let them play, mm -hmm. then they can survive. Do you think that in general, bigger corporations, large enterprises who might be a little bit more on the older, on the conservative side, give enough trust, time and money to innovation topics? Do you, do you see a change in the last years in that field as well? Um, I think there's never enough. Mm -hmm. There can always be more, mm -hmm. but it's getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are more and more examples, good examples. I mean, I think we are one, I hope so at least. Um, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago, some larger companies, German companies, for example, came to Silicon Valley. You know, the Silicon Valley tourists. They go to yeah. LinkedIn, they go to Facebook, they come probably to Bosch, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now every one of the mid-sized companies was here already, and now the small companies are coming. Yeah. So that means to me that the mid-sized traditional industries and companies, they understood it already and they do something about it. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, then one final question that is again focused on you as a person because that's in most situations the most interesting thing. I checked your LinkedIn before of course and I saw your, your LinkedIn banner where you say uh, keep calm and believe in unicorns. Yeah. Um, is that something that is like stands for you that you have a really good optimistic view into the future and believe in major growth and a, and a positive future? Or how did it come to, to having that banner on LinkedIn? So there's a long story and I'm not telling you the long story. There's a relationship between me and unicorns, also oh. the tiny stuffed animals and okay. whatever. Okay. And then I found this. You found one? You saw one? I found this. A real unicorn? Of course, several. Okay. Um, I, have, I have several on my desk actually. Um, <laughs> and then I found the sticker. And But you say something very interesting because that's the reason why I came to US for fell in love with Silicon Valley and why I stayed mm -hmm. and that's my positive attitude mm -hmm. because this place is special it is full of positive attitude and I, I just loved it I mm -hmm. it just fell it just fitted better my personality I am very positive speak, I'm looking forward you speak out of my heart right now I didn't like history at school now I, I had one I had one six which is the worst grade in Germany education in my life and it was about history it was in history and it was about the German second world war yeah so, and it's not because it's not important it's just because it's it's, too much. it's the past yeah and it's the past exactly yeah. 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 yeah yeah and everything about the future I mean they don't teach that in school but they that's the stuff I'm really interested in yeah and I think there's a good reason why it is like it is right yeah. I mean Europe is old in terms of there's a lot of history in the yes. country and that's yeah. why you deal with your history california is younger than most of the restaurants in frankfurt um, so there is no history to deal with so the yeah. only direction they have to is looking forward yeah yeah okay so inventing the future and believing in a bright future and in unicorns and in unicorns that makes absolute sense all right um as we are almost at our destination I want to thank you once again. Um, I think that was a great conversation. Uh, I would recommend everyone to connect with Yvonne if you're ever in the area. Um, she is around on many events, juries, panels. Um, and if you have a great idea that could be interesting and you want to be like a Bosch, uh, <laughs> then feel free to reach out to her. And uh, any final comment from your side? Thanks for the ride. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you.